Hi guys, so this is a video that I've been meaning to make for a few days now and this is coming to you a bit late, I'm sorry about that but because it's the school holidays and everything at the moment like my entire family has been at home for the past few days so I've not really had time to make this video after like I went to the Killers concert but here we are, I finally got an opportunity to film it and here we are, I'm making this video. So if you guys are subscribed to me or if you've watched any of my videos before you will know that I love the Killers more than anything in the world and at the moment it is Killers UK tour time, they are in the UK and also if you know me you will know that the Killers UK tour time is my favourite time ever, to me it is better than birthdays and Christmases and everything all put together, it is just my favourite time because I just feel like when my favourite band is in the UK like I don't know I just feel like kind of closer to them if you know what I mean like it's just really nice like them being in the same time zone as me and me being able to just like see things that they're doing and what they're getting up to on social media and just like follow all of that that's just really fun so this is my favorite time of year and the last time I got to experience this was on the wonderful wonderful tour when the killers came to Bolton and I went to that show so it's really great being able to experience all this again for the first time in four years it's crazy that like it's been that long and I'm getting to go through all of that all over again it's just been really fun and really great so yeah, but the reason you guys are watching this video is because you're wanting me to review the Doncaster concert that I went to. So this was the first stadium date of the Killers and Pod and the Mirage tour. The actual first date was Sheffield, which I was not lucky enough to get tickets to, but I went to this Doncaster tour date and yeah, it was just an amazing show. So I'm reviewing it here on YouTube for you guys. So if you're heading to a Killers show in the next few days, you're going to any dates on the UK tour or any other dates like around the world, you can just like get a bit of an overview and a bit of an insight into like what goes on at Killers concerts and like how much fun I had and how much fun you guys will probably have to if you go to a Killers show. So yeah. So yeah, let's get into talking about the Doncaster tour date. So if you guys watch my Killers concert excitement video, the video where I'm like, I'm seeing the Killers twice on their UK tour, that video that I posted a couple of weeks ago. In that video, I talked about how I got tickets to the Doncaster date of the tour and the Manchester one. And in that video, I explained that I got tickets to Doncaster and Manchester so I could sort of like go to two different Killers concerts that have like different perspectives of the stage, if you know what I mean. Like in, at the Doncaster date, there was literally like no VIP thing like the whole VIP scheme was just like it was for people who wanted to watch the killers from like in like glass boxes kind of and like higher up in the seats like and it was like those kind of VIP packages that come with like a buffet and everything it wasn't like a close to the stage kind of VIP package it was just like getting like food drinks all of that and it was just like in the seated area it wasn't like VIP standing area like next to the stage so basically with the Doncaster date it was just like whoever comes the earliest is who gets barrier who gets closest to the stage and that's why I decided to buy the Doncaster tickets as well as the Manchester ones because I just thought it was good that there was a date on the tour that was a really small stadium and I just really liked that the VIP area like wasn't for like trying to get close to the stage like it was just whoever was fastest basically got to get closest to the stage so I thought that if I bought Doncaster tickets I'd have a chance at getting closer to the stage just like through like determination and just like being fast and it worked out pretty well so that's what I'm going to discuss with you guys in this video so now let's just get on with talking about the concert so I got into the venue when doors opened at like 5 30 it might have been like at like 5 45 around the time that I like actually got let in but I didn't like queue on the grass for ages I saw like a few people outside like, I did see some people lining up and queuing to get into the venue from like quite early in the morning and I did see on social media today I only just saw this today but like those people who were lining up there some people were like numbering their hands and like keeping their place in the queue so they could like leave and like use the bathroom and get food and all of that and I thought that was really cool I and I know that happens at other artist concerts as well when fans are like waiting in line and they get numbered to like keep their place in the queue but I don't know I just like didn't think of it happening at a killer's concert like I don't know why because like obviously they would do that but I don't know why I didn't think of that but anyway I got there at like half five five forty five ish and I just sort of like when everyone was going into the concert 
venue like through the gates and getting the bag checked and everything I just went in like at the main time that everyone was like meant to go in I didn't like queue on the grass or anything and like get numbered or anything I now I know that people do that at killers concerts I would try to do that in the future if like I had people with me who'd like be willing to queue for that long maybe I would do that and try and get barrier one day and like be a bit more determined but I didn't do that for this one but yeah I just went in at the same time that everyone else went in and I managed to get a pretty good spot I mean like the actual queue of people lining up like once we'd all had our bags checked and everything like the actual queue to get into like the standing area of the stadium was pretty long like we queued for like about 15 minutes to get in it wasn't bad because it was just kind of fun like standing in line and soaking up the atmosphere and all of that but after that we got let into the venue and even though I didn't queue on the grass or anything I got a really good spot <laughs> I don't know how I feel like it was just because it was a really small stadium and like it wasn't actually like completely sold out but like I managed to get like I don't know exactly what row it was because like this like standing area it was just like a big mass of people basically but I feel like I was like between like 8th row or like 10th row but I had a really good view of the stage and if you watched my Killers Doncaster concert vlog that I uploaded a couple of days ago that was my previous video like if you go and check that out you can see like how close I am to the stage and it's just like I cannot believe that I got that position at a Killers concert like so far in my life that's the closest I've ever been to the stage I mean one day in the future maybe I will get barrier one day but that was just incredible to me to see the killers that close up and yeah. So I'm going to talk a bit about the support act now, Blossoms. They were fun. They're a nice pop, like indie pop band. Like I do like some of their songs and they're good fun. And I feel like they were a good choice for a warm up band for the killers. Then after that, after Blossoms finished, it was time for the killers to come on stage. And just before they came on stage, I was just like, I was stood in the crowd, like looking at how close to the stage I was. And I was just thinking to myself, I just let myself think for a moment. And I was just like, this is the moment that I've waited two years to experience. Like, and I'm here now in this moment, like, like I've been waiting for so long. And finally, like this moment is here and I'm going to enjoy it. And yeah, it was just really surreal. Like for the entire concert, I basically just felt like it's a weird thing to say, but I feel like, you know, like in my Bolton concert vlog that I did, I felt like I was experiencing that again, but like from the perspective of like being in the crowd, like in that vlog, I kind of felt like I was experiencing the concert through like some sort of virtual reality thing. Like I wasn't really there. Like it did not feel real. Like it was just a really weird feeling. Like I hadn't seen the killers for so long. And and then I was there like that close to them and it, it was it just didn't, didn't feel real at all like the only thing that like proves to me that it was real is that I have videos of my vlogs and like I bought this merch and like I have my wristbands as well to prove it then the killers started playing my own soul's warning as the opening song and the confetti came down the white confetti for my own soul's warning and literally as the confetti came down I just like started crying straight away like tears just started coming out of my eyes and I was just like how am I crying already and like the part where Brandon sings in the song like I just wanted to get back to where you are like when I heard him sing that I'm like yes I just wanted to get back to where the killers are and I was literally just like stood there crying and like dancing in the confetti it was an emotional moment then after that the killers played interlude and I dreamed of hearing this song live for so long like I remember like back in my I got tickets to see the killers video from like 2018 for the wonderful wonderful tour like in that video I, I said like I've always wanted to hear interlude played live and then at this concert like they opened the show with that and I was just like like just hearing Brandon sing Enterlude live, like it just made me really happy. And I feel like this is a song that's just perfectly suited to concerts. It just perfectly describes concerts. Like it's good to have you with us, even if it's just for the day. Like we're singing that to the killers and they're singing it to us. And it's just like, and and I just love Enterlude. Like, I feel like it's just really emotional live. Then the killers played a few hits, When You Were Young, Smile Like You Mean It, Jenny. And then after that they played Blowback, which is one of the killer songs that 
I wanted to hear live most from Imploding the Mirage. Like, I just love this storyline of this song so much and I relate to it a lot. Like, I just really love Blowback. And after that, The Killers played Running Towards a Place and that's another of my favourite songs from Imploding the Mirage. I just really love that song. It's so romantic, so upbeat and fun and yeah, when I heard that live, like, yes, it was just perfect. Then after that, The Killers played Mr. Brightside and that was a bit of a strange choice playing it that early in the set but I think that's The Killers' new thing in the UK tour now or like any concerts that they do after that like they'll do Mr Brightside either really early or as the last song in the set. When I first heard about the killers putting Mr Brightside pretty early on in the set like I always thought that like it wasn't really going to work I thought it was going to feel a bit weird but then when I actually experienced it live I did not think it was weird like it was as great as always and I feel like it might have actually been better to just like get it out of the way at the beginning because then like the more casual fans in the crowd aren't just like sat there waiting for Mr Brightside at the end and like they actually get to pay attention to like the killer's newer music which, which is like some of their best in my opinion. Then after that they played Somebody Told Me which is always fun. Then after that we got Fire In Born and at first I didn't recognise this song like they started playing it and I, because it's like kind of slow and acoustic at the beginning like I was just kind of like what is this and then I just realised from the lyrics like it was Fire In Born. I was just like yay Fire In Born. Then they play Shadow Play the Joy Division cover and and I really liked that because like recently it was the anniversary of Ian Curtis's death and it was just a really nice tribute for them to add that back into the set list and I've never heard it live as well so that was really cool too. Then the killers played Run for Cover which I was not really expecting like but it's always fun and it's a really fun song to sing along to as well like singing the whole verses like as fast as you can like to Run for Cover. After Run for Cover the killers played Runaway Horses which is one of my favourite songs on Pressure Machine and it was a dream to hear it live like it sounded so incredible but also I have a pretty funny anecdote to tell you guys that went on during Runaway Horses. So just before Runaway Horses came on I turned around to like the rest of the crowd behind me and I screamed Runaway Horses and, um, and none of them believed me and then like Brandon started singing Small Town Girl and then everyone was like whoa how did you guess that song so fast? Then this lady who was next to me in the crowd turned around to me and she went, wow, you're a really big Killers fan. And I was like, yeah, I am. Then she asked me what my favourite album was and I said my favourite album's Battleborn and she went oh because like, cause, like a lot of people think that's a controversial choice to have as your favourite Killers album because like I feel like not a lot of people like Battleborn but to me it's like my favourite album of all time. She said that her two favourite albums were Hot Fuss and Imploding the Mirage and I was like yes I love those two and then I said I'm Pressure Machine too and then she was like yes Pressure Machine and then she was like how old are you and I'm like I'm 20 and then she said how long have you been a fan of the Killers and and I'm like five years and she said she'd been a fan for like 20 years I think and then she told me this story about how when she was younger she worked in a pastry shop and she discovered hot fuss around that time and then she was like I remember when I had no responsibilities and I was just a fan of the killers and now I've got two kids and then she turned around and screamed to my dad and she was like I love your daughter she's amazing and my dad was like I know <laughs> and I was just laughing so much and then she just started hugging me and she was like I love you and I was just laughing but we ended up becoming friends for the night and we just like sang all the songs together we both knew like all the words and we were both like true killers fans which was really cool it was cool to meet another person who was as obsessed with the killers as i am and we just like sang all the words to every song and danced together for the rest of the night which was really fun but Runaway Horses was amazing live and I'm so glad that Pressure Machine was getting some love on the tour because like it's my second favourite Killers album, second to Battleborn and yeah it just made me happy that a song from it was getting played. Then the Killers played A Dust Long Fairy Tale and this one was funny as well because during the song where Brandon sings Long Brown Hair and Foolish Eyes like the lady who I was singing with she just turned around and like pointed to me when Brandon sang those lyrics and it was just so funny and my dad was just laughing his head off in the background. <laughs> but one thing that annoyed me about A Dust on Fairy Tale in Doncaster was the fact that no one in the crowd like put their lights up on the phones during the song. I mean maybe that was because like it was still pretty light when the killers performed this song so like if everyone put their phone lights on like you wouldn't really have been able to see it anyway. But 
I put the, my light up on my phone and I just like held it up with my Important Than Large inspired phone case because I just felt like I had to do it and it just felt wrong that no one else was doing it so like because I was like pretty close to the stage I kind of hoped that Brandon saw that I was like putting my phone light on and like that I knew to do it. Like it may have just been because of how light it was that no one did it but I don't know it just there was literally just like me and about five other people in the entire crowd of like 25,000 who did it. Since I went to Doncaster I've watched like loads of videos on YouTube of like all the other tour dates on the UK tour and on all of those tour dates like everyone in the crowd put their lights on on their phones and like it may have just been because like it was later on in the set or it was a darker day on those tour dates but like I just feel like it was strange that no one did it in Doncaster. But anyway, let's stop talking about the audience and get back to the set list. So after The Killers played Just Slam Fairy Tale, Brandon did a cover of The First Time Ever I Saw Your Face by Roberta Flack. And I mentioned in my vlog video of the concert day that like this is one of my favourite like romantic songs written ever. Like I have a lot of favourite romantic songs, but this is a song like I found at the same time that I discovered The Killers. And I just sort of always like thought of this song like and associated it with that time that I found the killers in the first place but like I never had like the thought of them making a cover of it I don't know why like obviously it was a perfect cover but I don't know why like it never came to my mind that like they could do a cover of it one day but like on this song Brandon's vocals were just incredible like I actually cried at this point in the concert as well like I was just like I was just having an out-of-body experience hearing him sing this live like I was just standing in the crowd and I was just like this is a magical moment like I can't believe I'm hearing him sing this song live like it was just incredible and I'll remember that forever. Then the killers started playing Runaways and when they started playing this song like the lady who I was singing and dancing with she just screamed Runaways is awesome and I was just like yeah and we both just started singing along to it. And then when Brandon sang the lyric blonde hair blowing in the summer wind a blue eyed girl playing in the sand like she just like tossed her hair because she had blonde hair and um, blue eyes and she was just like this song is about me and I was just laughing it was just funny then there was the transition from Runaways into Read My Mind which is always cool when Brandon sang Read My Mind he also included the Somebody to Lean On by Bill Withers snippet that he included when he played Read My Mind at Glastonbury and that was cool to see as well then Dying Breed happened and the visuals for this song like I was absolutely blown away like just hearing Dying Breed in like the pitch black night like with those incredible visuals of Las Vegas like I it was just breathtaking like, like I find these visuals like pretty overwhelming but like in a good way like they were just so like detailed and, and they were so perfect for the song as well and it just felt like they were coming at you. The visuals for this song also really remind me of like the cover for The Killer's career box, the vinyl career box, if you guys have seen that. And yeah, just the visuals in general for the Employee of the Mirage tour like were mind blowing, like I love them all. The visuals when they played Human in the encore, like the visuals of the dancers, like they were incredible as well. Like they actually really remind me of Pet Shop Boys visuals. Like I don't know if you guys have watched like the 2009 Brit Awards performance with Pet Shop Boys, Lady Gaga and Brandon Flowers. Like the visuals in the background for that, that's what that really reminded me of personally. And then the Spaceman visuals as well with like the asteroid floating in the air, like it really felt like you were actually in space, like it was incredible. But anyway, back to Dying Breed. Dying Breed is like my second favourite song on Employing the Mirage, my favourite single, and it's one of my favourite killer songs. It's probably in my top 10 of killer songs of all time. Like, I just love Dying Breed so much. The lyrics are so romantic, it's so energetic, and like, just, just the energy of it is so good. Not many people seem to know Dying Breed, but like me and the lady who I was singing with, we were literally poor going to Dying Breed. We were literally jumping up and down and hugging each other and screaming the na 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 part of it. Like it was just, like it was just so fun. Then the killers played the Rut segue into Caution, and I really love that Rut is being included in this tour. Like I feel like the lyrics of Rut also like fit really well with Imploding the Mirage. Like I've always thought that Imploding the Mirage is like a sequel to Wonderful Wonder because there's a lot of the same like lyrical themes about like a couple staying together through like adversity. I feel like Wonderful Wonderful is like getting through all the tough times and then like Imploding the Mirage is like the part where you fall in love with each other all over again like 
as a result of like getting through everything. I feel like that's why Employing the Marge is such a romantic album. But yeah, I loved hearing Rut live. I mean, I've never heard it live and even just hearing that small snippet of it in the segue, like, I just really love Rut. Then Caution happened, which was obviously amazing. Like, this song has such great visuals as well. Like, just the visuals of, like, the... I don't know how to explain it, but, like, sort of sparks flying through the air. Like, it feels like fireworks, but, like, not quite. It's sort of, like, raining down. But it's just really beautiful and, yeah, a great imagery for Caution as well. Then there was the encore and obviously Human and Spaceman were amazing as always. I love both those songs. Spaceman is actually my top five favourite killer songs of all time. And even though it's played at like basically every killer show, like I always love it, always appreciate it. And like it just made me really happy to hear it again. Like I've not heard it in like four years, so yeah. I also have another funny anecdote from around this time in the concert. So by this point I had like a bit of an inside joke with everyone in the crowd around me that I was like the ultimate killer killer song guesser and that I could like tell what killer song was coming on within like one note of the song being played and like I actually could though but like mostly it was just because like everyone in this crowd literally thought like I was a genius or something because like I could recognize killer songs so fast and like none of them like really knew the songs but like it was just because like I keep up with all the killer set lists on setlist fm and like I watch like all the set lists and songs that are being played on social media and I just research all of that before I come I did do some research that helped me to guess the songs but they thought like I was literally a genius or something so when Spaceman was about to come on and the Spaceman visuals were being like played on the background of the stage, like I said Spaceman was coming and like no one around me believed it and then the killer started playing it and everyone was like, whoa, how'd you guess that? But when Spaceman was first being played, like in the first few notes of Spaceman, I actually heard like the first note of Midnight Show like being put in there. I think it was supposed to be like a teaser or something like to foreshadow that Midnight Show was coming after. But like when I heard that note, I screamed and I went, Midnight Show! and everyone around me was like midnight show are you sure and then like when spaceman came on everyone was like oh it's spaceman but then after that the killers played midnight show when everyone was like whoa you actually predicted midnight show and i was like yeah but like i was so shocked to hear midnight show because i thought they would only play that in sheffield because it was like quite an intimate like gig and the fact that they played it in Doncaster, like, I have wanted to hear Midnight Show for so long because I feel like, personally, I think it's one of Brandon's best written songs ever. Like, just the double meanings and lyrics, like, I just love Midnight Show. And it is, and it was so amazing to hear it live. Like, I just could not believe that I was hearing Midnight Show live. And like, and like the lady who I was dancing with, like she knew all the words to Midnight Show as well because like she was a proper Killers fan and we were both just like screaming every word to it and it was just so much fun, like it just made me really happy. Also they've not played Midnight Show for the rest of the tour so far which to me makes it even more special like they just played it in Sheffield and in Doncaster. Like the rest of the UK didn't get Midnight Show but like only those two concerts did and I was at one of those concerts. Then the killers ended the concert with all these things that I've done, which was obviously amazing as usual. This one was also even more fun because of me like being in the standing area. When the long streamers came down like from the confetti cannon during like the middle of this song, like everyone in the crowd around me sort of like grabbed like a piece of the streamers and we all like sort of wrapped it around ourselves together and we all just like were sort of like trapped together in like a circle of streamers but we were all like dancing together and it was really fun. I feel like it was just really cute way to end the concert. It just kind of made me feel like a real sense of community. Killers left the stage after all these things that I've done and I just want to say that this concert was just an incredible experience. I mean all Killers concerts are obviously incredible but this one was just so good. I, I feel like being closer to the stage made it even more memorable and amazing for me. The set list was great too, but the only thing that I want to mention is that I really wish In The Car Right Side was on the set list. I mean, last night in Southampton, the killers played In The Car Right Side as well as Runaway Horses, and I just wish that that song was on the set list. Like, it's my personal favourite song from Pressure Machine, and it would just mean the world to me if I heard that song live, because, like, that song got me through a lot of stuff, and I would just remember it forever if I heard that song live. Also, I've seen, like, when 
when the killers played Coventry, like that set list at Coventry, it was like my dream set list. Like the killers played the Getting By Two, they played my two all time favourite killer songs, um, This River Is Wild and Be Still, like my favourite songs of all time. And like I've never heard those songs live and like I don't want to be like jealous of Coventry or anything because like obviously my set list was amazing too. I got Runaway Horses, I got Midnight Show, I got Shadow Play, I got so many incredible songs that other people would love to hear live and like I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful to even like have like the opportunity to go to a killer show. Like I mean like when I said in like my previous video about like getting the killers tickets for this year, like when I said that when I went to Bolton in the Wonderful Wonderful tour, like and I believed that was my last killers show of all time that I would ever go to. Like that was only my first one and I literally believed like I would never be able to go again. Like I truly did believe that at the time. And like I'm just so grateful and fortunate to like have the money to be able to go see the killers. Like even one like any killers concert at all is better than none obviously and it just means the world to me that like I had the money to be able to do this I had people who would take me to go do this and that like the killers came like near me to do this concert and like make it possible and like an opportunity for me to go to their concert and like that's another thing that I love about the killers like they don't just like a lot of other bands think that like the UK is just Manchester and London and they just do like one day at each of those cities but like the killers do every single place that they can possibly do like any small town in the UK like they will go to it but I'm so grateful for them for doing that for their victims and yeah but yeah I'm so happy to have been able to go see the killers in Doncaster but also I'm going to go see the killers in Manchester soon at Old Trafford and I'm also so grateful to be going to two killers concerts this time like I never thought in a million years that this would be able to be an opportunity for me like 16 year old Victoria would never believe like this would be a possibility so yeah I'm just sort of living my dream here but yeah, who knows what will happen in Manchester. I mean, like, the Killers could play This River as well, Be Still, The Getting By 2 and In The Car Outside all on the same set list in Manchester. I mean, if that happened, I would literally die. But talking about, like, when I went to see The Killers on the Wonderful Wonderful Tour in Bolton, I don't know how I would compare the Doncaster gig to that concert because there were so many, like, different factors that made, like, those two concerts, like, both brilliant to me. I mean, the Bolton concert in 2018 was even closer to home for me than Manchester would be. Like, it's just so funny to me that the killers came to Little Bolton and just, like, did a concert there. I mean, just the water tower setting Bolton on it, like, it always just makes me really laugh when I see that. Also, just Brandon shouting out and calling out from the heart of Bolton. <laughs> like, that's just really funny to me as well. And, like, the fact that they played Just Another Girl there as well. Like, I am still not over that. Like, I know it's so many killers fans like life dream to hear just another girl live and I got it in like my tiny little hometown concert so that's just so surreal to me still but yeah but yeah the Doncaster gig was incredible for so many other reasons like I loved that like there was no VIP standing area so so like to get to the front you had to be like just early and dedicated like it wasn't about like having loads of money to be able to spend on like big VIP ticket packages or anything like that like, it's literally just like first come first serve like, I just feel like that's the way it should be like reward fans for being dedicated not for like having loads of money you know what I mean I think maybe like I don't know both those concerts were both incredible and like we don't even know what's going to happen at Manchester yet but I like Doncaster a lot personally because like of how close I was to the stage like I said and I got a few really rare songs that are quite obscure to hear live like Midnight Show and Runaway Horses and Shadow Play. I've never heard any of those songs live before and also I got to hear six out of ten songs from Imploding the Mirage live. And a lot of people who are only going to like one date on the Employee in the Mirage tour might only hear like four songs from that album live. So the fact that I've heard more than half of that album live is just surreal to me. I think what this concert also let me know about myself was that I much prefer being in the standing area at a killer's concerts because like I just love the atmosphere you're surrounded by other fans like the confetti coming down like it's just such an incredible experience I mean like when I was at Bolton I sort of looked down at like everyone dancing in the confetti and everything I was like I wish I was in there I mean like the only reason I was in the seats was because I had to go with like my entire family at that point because like I was only 16 and like my parents 
parents thought because it was my first concert ever like they were like you've got to sit in the seats like like because it was my first ever concert like they didn't know if I would like being in the standing area and if I'd find it a bit like claustrophobic or whatever but I don't I just like loved experiencing a killer's concert like that and yeah it was just so much fun so just really fun to become friends with another killer's fan in the crowd and become friends with them for the night and just like sing and dance with them like I feel like that's the sense of community that I've always wanted from like a fan community like being a part of a fan community like that's what I've always wanted to like feel from that like that connection with other fans and like with the people around me so yeah um, also the visuals on this tour were way better than the ones on the wonderful wonderful tour like no comparison like these ones were just incredible like they just took you to another place and Doncaster still kind of is like a hometown gig for me. I mean, it's obviously like not a hometown gig because like I'm from Lancashire, I'm not from Yorkshire. But like I visit Yorkshire a lot and I live like pretty close to it. But even though I had to travel a bit to get to Doncaster, like it still was pretty close. So that was cool. But really, I was just like really glad to be back at a Killers concert. I mean, it had been four years since the last time that I saw them. So I was just desperate to get back to seeing them live again, really. I saw something that someone posted on social media like a couple of weeks ago and it was something saying like I can't remember if it was like a killers fan that posted this or like a fan of another artist but what they were talking about in the post was basically just like how about in the last few years like they've just been going from home to university and coming back and, and not really having like a place where they feel like they belong and like that feels like home to them and they were saying like that music and like their favourite artists like felt like home to them even though like a place like like a physical place that they could actually go to like didn't really feel like home like when they put on their headphones and listen to their favorite person like like that felt like home to them and I really like related to this thing that this person posted honestly like my life has just been all over the place in like these past few years like in like the way of like physically like moving between home with my parents or like university with like my flatmates like just going between those two locations but also like emotionally as well like like I just feel like because of like obviously the pandemic and all of that and also just like stuff in my personal life everything has just felt like a bit of a mess recently but the killer's music and Brandon's solo music as well that has always like felt like home to me when I listen to it I feel like my spiritual home is the killer's music, their music videos, their interviews, their tours, their concerts, all of that just like does feel like home to me. Brandon once said in like one of his speeches, I think it was at Transmit, that he said like sometimes like home isn't a physical place, sometimes it's a person. And honestly I feel like Brandon Flowers and his music are home to me. The killers might not have come to my hometown, like they've come to Yorkshire, but it did feel like a hometown gig anyway, really, because like the killers fan community, that atmosphere, all of that is like my spiritual home. That is basically like the place where I feel like I belong. Like just being surrounded by other killers fans, just like singing and dancing to all those songs in unison, like to me, like that just gives me such a great sense of community, a great sense of belonging. And I saw the killers again after four years, it felt like coming home basically. It felt like I'd never been away, like it felt like I'd just seen them in Bolton even though it was four years ago. Like it felt like I'd been away for ages but at the same time it felt so familiar. But really I'm just glad to have the killers back again. Like it's been too long since they've been back to the UK and I'm just so happy to have them back here on tour again. Like, like I just missed them so much and I know a lot of other victims really miss them as well. So yeah, I'm just glad that they're back. And yeah, roll on Manchester. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this review of the Doncaster concert. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to. Bye guys!